Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> Stacey and Neil, welcome back. You were on the show last time. We gave everyone two chances to reach our final, and today is your final chance. Remind us how you two know each other. Um, we're engaged, we're getting married this year. Splendid. Congrats. Oh, pause for congratulations <laughs> there. <laughs> congratulations, I think, all round. Yeah, very well done. How did you meet? Um, we met at work. We used to work together at the same place. Oh, right. So how did you do last time? <laughs> Not amazingly well, but I, I think we've got something to work on for today. I think you've got something to work on today. I think you're going to go a long way today. I think a long way. That's just, just my tip. Don't I don't want to curse you at all, but there we are. <laughs> OK, Tom and Craig, welcome to the show. Nice to have you here. Um, how do you two know each other? Uh, I've been running a knitting club for about th uh, three years. Tom got stuck on his scarf, so he came along and we gave him a hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's, so just the, that's just brilliant. How many are there in, in your knitting club? Oh, well, the mailing list is about 3,000, but... Uh, it can range, you know, That's... 20 to 50, it all depends. Are you responsible for either of the very fine tops I'm, I'm looking at at the moment? <laughs> Sadly not. No, these are bought, I'm afraid. Yeah, zips, I bet they're a real pain. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, best of luck this afternoon and with the knitting. That's brilliant. Um, Heather and Julie, welcome to you. How do you two know each other? We've been friends since high school. So and... about three years, really. <laughs> three years. <laughs> <laughs> and where do you come from? We come from Newcastle under Lyme, Staffordshire. Very good indeed. Do you knit? <laughs> no. <laughs> no? Uh, and finally, we welcome back Anne and Jane. You were also on the show last time. Remind us how you two know each other. For the last six years, we've walked home from school together. Basically, I s leave my house, I go to a street corner and meet ten children. <laughs> we all walk to another street corner, meet some more children. And by the time I get to school, I've got 20 children. It's a kind of Pied Piper thing. Do you have a flute at all? <laughs> no, um, but I have a very loud voice. <laughs> OK, well, we'll be finding out more about you all throughout the show. Uh, meanwhile, though, I have to introduce the man with all the facts and figures, the man who knows everything. He is my pointless friend. He's Richard. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Top of the afternoon. A uh, very good afternoon to you as well. How are you? I couldn't complain less. Well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Well, that is good news for us Isn't all. It? Uh, we've got a great show today. We've got two returning couples. We've got, uh, we've got Anne and Jane coming back, and we've got Stacey and Neil. Now, Stacey and Neil were beaten about as comprehensively as it's possible <laughs> to get beaten on this show. They had five pointlesses scored against them in one round. I think it's a record defeat. I would normally say today I think you're going to do better. I think statistically it would be impossible for you to do worse. <laughs> so I predict you will do better. However, as to who's going to win, if you'd said to me Come which on, of then. these couples met whilst knitting, <laughs> I would not have immediately gone for Tom and Craig. <laughs> I think it's going to be a needle match, and I think Tom and Craig are going to win it. OK. We've asked every question on Pointless to 100 people before the show. <laughs> to stay in the game, all our players have to do is score as few points as they can, and they do that by searching out those obscure answers that as few of our 100 people gave as possible. Now, the thing everyone's trying to do, of course, is find a pointless answer. That's one of the answers that none of our 100 people gave. And every time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, the jackpot hasn't been won in the last two shows, and we add another £1,000 to that today. So today's jackpot starts off at £5,250. <laughs> Let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. And you just have to be careful, because if anyone gives me an incorrect answer, then this will happen. And you will score the maximum of 100 points. OK, let's see what our first category is. UK politics. <laughs> uh, can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> right, let's find out what our first question is going to be. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Conservative and Labour Party leaders since 1945 as they could. Yeah, we're looking for anyone who's led the Conservative Party or the Labour Party since 1945. There are 21 names on the list. You're essentially looking to name a pointless politician. Very best of luck with that. <laughs> OK. Right. Uh, Stacey and Neil, you all drew lots before the show, and today you go first. Neil, how good is your recent UK political history? Not very good. 
If there's two subjects I don't like, it's probably politics and geography. So we had geography last time and, uh, and politics, politics this time. So. Excellent. Good. Um, I'm going to have to go for John Major. Someone from recent history. Jump I think you're hoping is a, is a safe answer. Yeah, Possibly not a low scorer. Well, let's see. You're hoping to score as few points as possible with John Major. Let's hope lots of people just forgot him. <laughs> <laughs> not entirely implausible. Let's see how many of our 100 people said John Major. John Major scores you 46. Richard? Yeah, John Major, he led the Conservatives and the country from 1990 to 1997. OK. Craig, how good's your, your political history of the UK? Uh, well, not too bad. Um, I'm going to try Margaret Beckett. When are you thinking Margaret Beckett? Well, I'm sure it briefly in the 90s. She... It was sort of interregnum? Yeah. This could be a fantastic answer. Let's see how many people said Margaret Beckett. You're right! I think this is going a long way down. Look at that! <laughs> well done, Craig. That's pointless. That adds £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £5,500. Very good. Very, very good answer indeed. And best of all, it scores you nothing, Richard. Uh, yeah, Margaret Beckett, was, uh, she was uh, leader of the Labour Party for ten weeks in 1994, in between two other people whose names I'm not allowed to mention in case anyone else wants to say their names. <laughs> nicely done there, Richard. Yeah. Very nicely <laughs> done. OK, Heather, how good's your recent history? Useless. Really? As, as good as my further back history. <laughs> OK, further back history, says pointing at Julie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, now we're looking for Conservative or Labour Party leaders since 1945. I'm going to go with somebody that my mum actually bumped into on a harbour once, and it was uh, Edward Heath. Right. So that's just stuck in my mind, so I'll go with that one, Edward Heath. Edward Heath, let's see how many people said that. Was that scream going to get higher? Is the thing? Yeah. <laughs> it sounded like it was. Excellent. Well, it only got to 37. Thank goodness it wasn't any lower. Um, not a bad score. 37, Heather. Edward Heath. Uh, yeah, Edward Heath was, he was uh, leader of the Tory party for 10 years. He was Prime Minister for five. And he once famously uh, met Heather's mum on a harbour. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Richard. Now, Jane. Jane, are you feeling comfortable about this? No. Oh, no. Come up. Oh, really? <laughs> um, both my answers have gone. Oh, so, no. Yeah. I'd have got Margaret back easily. <laughs> um, I'm going to say Neil Kinnock. Neil Kinnock, you say? Yeah. 46 is the high score. Let's see if Neil Kinnock comes below John Major, as he was won't. <laughs> How many people said Neil Kinnock? Scores you 17. Richard, Neil Kinnock. Yeah, Neil Kinnock, of course, he led the Labour Party from uh, 83 all the way through to 92, but was, uh, was never Prime Minister. OK, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scoreboard as it stands. Right. Well, that's an interesting scoreboard. Tom and Craig looking very good on nothing there. Brilliant answer from Craig. Margaret Beckett there. Stacey and Neil. 46, a little bit exposed there. Stacey, you're going to have to find a nice low-scoring answer on the next pass. Mm. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? <laughs> OK, we are looking for Conservative and Labour Party leaders since 1945. Anne, have you had lots of ideas that everyone else has nicked on the way, on the way up? Um, <laughs> no, I've got two ideas in my head that Very I'm good. not sure which way to go. Um, but I will go with Michael Foote. You're going to say Michael Foote. Well, the high scorers are Stacey and Neil on 46. You got a nice score there. There's your red line. If you come below that red line, you're definitely in. 
Excellent. Let's see how many people said Michael Foot. That scores you nine, and that takes your total up to 26. Richard? Yeah, very good answer. Michael Foote, of course, Neil Kinnock's predecessor as leader of the Labour Party. Thank you very much. Julie, you are currently on 37. The high scorers are still Stacey and Neil on 46. You have to score eight or less with this. I don't want to put any pressure on you, but eight or less. I'm going to say Sir Anthony Eden. Sir Anthony Eden. There's your red line. You want to be scoring eight or less with that answer. It has to be correct. I know. But it's good to take a punt. That's what this game's all about. If you come below that red line, you are definitely staying on. Right. You are saying Sir Anthony Eden. Let's see if it's a correct <coughs> answer. And if it is, how many people said it? Sir Anthony Eden. It's right. Sir Anthony Eden scores you nine points. Sir Anthony Eden. Uh, yeah, a great answer, Julie. He was well within the time limit. He was leader of the Tories and of the country from 1955 to 1957. Very good. That scores you nine and takes your total up to 46. Tom, Julian, Heather and Stacey and Neil are our point leaders on 46. You want to be scoring 45 or less to be sure of a place in the next round. I'm going to go for Ian Duncan Smith. There is your red line. If you come in below that red line, Ian Duncan Smith has carried it for you. You want to be scoring 45 or less. Let's see how many people said Ian Duncan Smith. Well, it's correct. It's good enough. Eight. Very good answer. That scores you eight, Richard. Yeah, yep, Ian Duncan Smith was leader of the Conservatives from 2001 to 2003. Uh, he described himself as the quiet man. OK. And finally, we come to you, Stacey. It is all in your hands. Now, you don't want to repeat of last time, do you, Stacey? No, but it needs to be pointless. It has to be pointless. I had and we'll go to an it. exciting tie, yes. And it went. Oh, and dear. I was really proud of that. I'm going to go for one, though, and I don't think it's right. But okay. it's, it's an outside chance, I suppose. OK. Paddy Ashdown. OK, you're going to go for Paddy Ashdown. You're hoping that Paddy Ashdown will be a pointless answer. Remember, we are looking for Conservative or Labour Party leaders since 1945. OK, well, let's see if that is a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Paddy Ashdown. Unfortunately, Paddy Ashdown is an incorrect answer, so that scores you the maximum of 100 points. That takes your total up to 146. Richard? Uh, yeah, Paddy Ashdown, he was a leader of the Lib Dems, but you, you had to find something obscure anyway, so it was, uh, it's worth a punt. Absolutely worth a punt. Uh, so that's the end of round one, and sadly, the losing pair with the highest score is Stacey and Neil. I'm sorry, <laughs> once again. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Not your bag, was it, that one? No. We tried. You did? <laughs> you tried? You tried? Not very well. <laughs> but do your heart sink when you saw UK politics come yeah. up there? Yeah. <laughs> no. I was ready just to walk out. <laughs> really? Well, nice of you to stay at least till the end of the round <laughs> yeah. before you did. Anyway, uh, Richard, what answers would have kept them in the game? Uh, well, there was actually only one pointless answer in this round, which uh, Craig already gave us, Margaret Beckett. So well done if you got that at home. We'll look at a couple of the, the other lower scoring ones, though. You'll see Margaret Beckett propping up the list uh, with naught. Michael Howard, who uh, followed on from Ian Duncan Smith for the Tories, he would have got you one point. And Gateskill, who was a uh, leader of the Labour Party for seven or eight years in the, in the 50s and 60s, he would have got you two points. Those are all very good answers. So well done if you got all of those. OK, thanks very much, Richard. Well, Stacey and Neil, I'm afraid you just didn't have that pointless UK politics knowledge you needed to get through to the next round. So I'm afraid we have to say goodbye to you. But you've been fantastic contestants. Thanks so much for playing. Thank you. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Now, obviously only two pairs can make it through to our head-to-head -head round, so one of our three teams now is going to be leaving at the end of this round disappointed. You just have to make sure it's not you. Right, our category for the second round is... Children's TV. Oh, Heather's thrilled with that. Children's TV. Uh, can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first and who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. 
Okay, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many characters from The Muppet Show as they could. Heather Still, please. That's great. <laughs> Richard, characters from The Muppet Show. Yeah, well, we've done political leaders. Now we're doing characters from The Muppets. Uh, all the correct answers here are recurring characters from The Muppet Show. Splendid. Thanks very much, Richard. In round two, we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers in each pass, and I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless. But you must be very careful because at least one of those answers is incorrect as well. And if you pick one of those, you will, of course, score the maximum of 100 points. OK, the first set of seven answers are... Animal, Lou Zealand, Dr Teeth, Higgs Boson, Nanky Poo, Kermit the Frog, Camilla the Chicken. Tom. How good are you on the Muppets? Not great, to be honest. A lot of the ones I thought of are probably in Sesame Street. I'm getting the two shows mixed up in my head. Easily done. Yeah. Yes, be careful. Be yeah. careful, be careful. Higgs boson. Higgs boson? Yeah, it's a bit risky, I think. A bit risky, but it rings a bell. I think he's the scientist guy. Let's see if Higgs boson is a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Higgs boson. Unfortunately, Tom, that is an incorrect answer, which means Higgs boson scores you the maximum of 100 points. Bad luck. Richard? That's what happens when I back you. Uh, the Higgs boson is what they're looking for in the Large Hadron Collider. It's the, uh, it could actually contain the secrets of the entire known universe and was never on the Muppets. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's a good name for a Muppet. Isn't it? Higgs boson yeah. and, and a scientist, like you say. <sighs> well, there you are. You've just given them a brilliant idea, but sadly, it's cost you 100 points. Julie, Heather was delighted with this topic when it came up, and this category specifically. Are you similarly happy with this? No. No. <laughs> That's why I want to go for okay. this. Hey, well, I'll tell you what, the good news is one of the incorrect answers, and maybe there was only one incorrect answer, mm. has just been taken off the board. There is at least one pointless answer in there. You get that and it'll add another 250 quid to the jackpot. Uh, I think I'm going to go with... A risky one, which I can see the puppet and it's flying through the air and doing things like that. I'm going to go for chick Camilla the chicken. Camilla the chicken? Yeah. Let's hope it's correct and let's hope nobody said it. Let's see how many people said Camilla the chicken. It's correct. This could go a long way down. Done, Julie. That's pointless. And it adds £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £5,750. <laughs> and more importantly, it scores you nothing. Richard, Camilla the Chicken. Uh, yeah, well done, Julie. Camilla the Chicken is not a hypothetical particle. It is uh, a Muppet. She was in The Muppet Show. She was also in The Muppets Take Manhattan and The Muppets Wizard of Oz. Very, very good answer. Splendid. Now, remember, there could easily be more pointless or incorrect answers in there. So, Jane, tread carefully. Finally found an intellectual question I can answer. <laughs> oh, fantastic. It is intellectual, isn't it? Kermit the Frog's definitely a Muppet. Uh-huh. Animal is my favourite Muppet. Mm-hmm. Nanky Poo, I don't think, is a Muppet. Mm-hmm. And of the other two, I think Dr Teeth is, but I'm not so certain about New Zealand. But I'm going to go play it safe because they've got 100 points and go with animal. Jane says animal. Let's see how many of our 100 people said animal. <laughs> Not bad. Animal scores you 37. Richard? Yep, animal was uh, the Muppets drummer, first appeared in 1975. Said to be inspired by Keith Moon from The Who who was a tiny little man covered in fur. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at all the others, see if there are any more pointless or uh, incorrect ones there. Dr Teeth, as you say, uh, he, was, uh, he was in the band The Electric Mayhem. Kermit the Frog, obviously, is a uh, Muppets character. Now, Alexander, there's a, there's a pointless there and an incorrect answer there. What do you think? Nanky Poo's from The Mikado, so That's New exactly Zealand right. must be pointless. New Zealand is a, a Muppet, a famous, not famous. Uh, clearly, uh, who used to throw fish like boomerang, New Zealand. <laughs> OK, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Ooh, it's another wide-ranging field, as I like to say. Uh, right at the bottom, Heather and Julie. Wonderful, pointless answer there. Tom and Craig. Oh, dear. 
you went out on a limb, it just <laughs> happened to be the wrong limb. So, Craig, on the next pass, you're going to see, have to see if you can find a pointless answer in there and see if that will save your bacon. Right, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put seven more answers on the board. We are looking for characters from The Muppet Show. Here they come. Beaker, Miss Piggy, Scooter, Crazy Harry, Gonzo, Tiny Tim, Dog Lion. There we are. And again, I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless and at least one of those answers is incorrect. Anne. The high scorers are Craig and Tom on 100. You only have to score 62 or less with this. Um, I'm not going to go for kind of the obvious ones. And hopefully, Beaker. You're going to go for Beaker? Yes. Are you confident in Beaker? Not necessarily. <laughs> OK, not necessarily, but there's the red line. You come below that red line, you are through to the next round. Let's hope Beaker does it for you. Let's see if it's a correct answer and how many of our 100 people said it. Beaker. It's right. And it's good enough. Not a bad answer at all. Scores you 12, takes your total to 49. Beaker, Richard. Yeah, Beaker, he was Dr Bunsen Honeydew's sidekick and assistant. He's currently looking for the Higgs boson, I think. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thank you very much. Now, remember, Heather, there is at least one pointless answer in there. There is at least one incorrect answer in there. Oh. The high scorers are Craig and Tom with 100. Yeah. You can't lose. I mean, your very worst answer will tie with them, and they haven't even given their second answer yet. Well, the one I was going to do was already gone. That was what it is. So right. I'm going to just play devil's advocate and go for it. I'll go for Scooter. OK, you're saying Scooter. Let's see if it's a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Scooter. It's right. I have a feeling this might be going a long way down. <laughs> That scores you four. That's good enough. Takes your total to four. Richard Scooter. Uh, yes, Scooter. He was the general gopher and dog's body for the, for the Muppets. Good answer. Very good. And Craig and Tom, I'm sorry to say, if the writing wasn't on the wall when Richard backed you to win, <laughs> it most certainly is on the wall now, I'm afraid. You are unequivocally the high scorers here, and you haven't even given your second answer yet. But, Craig, you have an opportunity here to leave a little legacy behind you in the shape of a 250 quid bonus to the, to the jack. Um, well, I know Miss Piggy obviously is in the Muppets. I'm sure Gonzo is as well. Tiny Tim is a kind of fairy tale character, so I'm guessing that's not uh, also a Muppet. So it's the other two, Crazy Harry and Dog Lion. Dog Lion sounds so ridiculously, like why would, Someone would make that up. I'm going to go for that. I'm going to go for Dog Lion. Dog Lion. Yeah. OK, good reasoning. Good reasoning. Let's hope it's correct. Let's see if it's a right answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said Dog Lion. It's good. I think this might be the answer we were looking for. Yes! <laughs> well done, Craig. That's Pointless, and it adds another £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £6,000. <laughs> and I'm afraid slightly too late to help you out. It scores you nothing, leaving your total at 100. Richard? Yeah, very well done. Of course, you can always win that next time if these guys don't win it today. So it's always worth doing. Uh, yeah, Dog Lion was a, uh, was a pointless answer. It was a little grey furry Muppet Dog Lion. Uh, let's take a look, look, look at the rest. Miss Piggy scored a massive 95 points, even more than Kermit. He will not be happy. Gonzo, <laughs> as you say, also famously a Muppet. Uh, Tiny Tim, as you said, is actually from Dickens' A Christmas Carol. They did do a Muppet version of it, but he was played by uh, Robin the Frog. That would have been a wrong answer. What do you think about Crazy Harry, Xander? Muppet or incorrect? Or Muppet or Nuppet? <laughs> Muppet, guess... Muppet or... Let's play Muppet or Nuppet. <laughs> I'm going to say Nuppet. No, Crazy Harry was. He was a Muppet. He, oh, was, a, he was a pyrotechnics expert. Unlucky. Oh, You've right just it. lost Muppet or Nuppet. Oh, no. <laughs> OK, thanks very much, Richard. So, at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid, is Tom and Craig. Um, Craig, Higgs-Boson, what were you thinking when Tom said that? 
Um, well, yeah, I knew it wasn't a Muppet. That's all I'm going to say. I've got to go and knit myself a new partner for the next show. Knit <laughs> a new partner. Well, exactly. As you say, everyone gets two cracks at the final. So we will see you again next time when I'm sure you will go a lot further. But uh, thanks, meanwhile, very much for playing. You've been great contestants. Thank you. For the remaining two pairs, though, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> well done, Heather and Julie, Anne and Jane. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which, unbelievably, is now standing at £6,000. <laughs> OK, you're going head-to-head -head on up to five questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer and you are now allowed to confer. That's the important thing. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair and you will win that question. And the first pair to win three will be playing for today's jackpot. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Good. Let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many female tennis career Grand Slam winners as they could. Heather, not happy with that at all. Oh, dear. Richard. Yeah, we're essentially looking for any female tennis player who's won the Grand Slam over the course of their career. That is anyone who's won the US Open, the Australian Open, Wimbledon and the French Open. You have to have won all four at least once to win the Grand Slam. There are nine names on the list. It's singles titles rather than doubles titles. Mm. So you have to win a singles title. OK, Heather and Julie, you answer first. You've got an answer. Virginia Wade. Anne and Jane. Well, Jean King. OK. Yeah. You're Billy, going for Billie Jean King. Right, well, <laughs> yeah, OK, Jean Heather and Julie have said Virginia Wade. Anne and Jane are saying Billie Jean King. Heather and Julie, Virginia Wade, let's see if that's a correct answer, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Virginia Wade. Oh. Oh, bad luck. That is an incorrect answer, I'm afraid. Anne and Jane have said Billie Jean King. Let's see how much that scores them, if it is also a correct answer. Billie Jean King. That's correct. That's all it needs to be. Good answer. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so after our first question, it is 1 0 to Anne and Jane. Richard? Yeah, Virginia Wade, uh, that's unlucky. She never won the French Open. She won the other three, but never got beyond the quarterfinals in the French, so that's really tough luck. Billie Jean King, though, is a great answer. She won 12 titles in all, including six Wimbledons. Let's take a look at all the names on the list. A couple of real tough ones at the bottom. Uh, Doris Hart and Shirley Fry, both uh, won the Grand Slams in the, in the 50s. Both of those would have been pointless. Uh, Maureen Connolly would have scored you one point. Margaret Court, uh, three. There's Billie Jean King. Chris Evert. Steffi Graffy once won all four in, in one year, in 1988. Uh, Serena Williams with 39. There's no Venus Williams there, but Martina Navratilova, top of them all, with uh, 40 points. OK, thank you, Richard. After the first question, then, it is 1-0 to Anne and Jane. Here is your second question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many members of ABBA as they could. Yeah, we're looking for any of the four members of the chart-topping group ABBA. I need absolute correct spelling of surname. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just first names will do. <laughs> Phew. OK, this time it is Anne and Jane's turn to go first. Bjorn. You're going for Bjorn? Yes. Heather and Julie. I can't think. Think. <laughs> <laughs> think. 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 <laughs> um, we'll go for Benny. Well, go on then. We haven't got a clue. Who wants <laughs> Can we draw them? <laughs> we'll go for Benny. That would be brilliant. <laughs> You're going to go for Benny. Benny. Okay. We have Bjorn and Benny. Bjorn from Anne and Jane first. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Bjorn. Oh, well, at least it's, it's a correct answer. <laughs> Benny. We have to see if Benny is a correct answer. Mm. You confident? No. OK, well, we'll find out. <laughs> let's see if it's a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said Benny. It's correct. Oh. And it's good. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
Very good. So after two questions, the scores are one all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are, those are actually the, the, the two most popular answers. Let's take a look <laughs> at, uh, at all of them. <laughs> at the bottom was uh, Anna Fried Lingstadt with 32, Agnetha Fultzog, 33. Uh, there's Benny Anderson, 34, way out ahead, uh, Bjorn Ulveas. OK, thank you very much, Richard. As I say, after two questions, we are now one all. Here's your third question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many of the Fellowship of the Ring as they could. Yeah, we're looking for any of the nine members of the Fellowship of the Ring who set out to return the one ring to Mordor in uh, Tolkien's classic Lord of the Rings. Heather and Julie, it's your turn to go first. Oh, I know Gandalf, it's like a safe <laughs> Go on then, yes, go on. Right. <laughs> we're going to go for a safe one. OK. And say Gandalf. Anne and Jane. Safe one. Samwise Ganji. Samwise Ganji. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Heather and Julie have gone for Gandalf. Let's see what that scored you. Not a bad score at all. 22. Anne and Jane have gone for Samwise Gamgee. Let's see how many people said that. It's correct. Oh, no. No. oh good. Oh. Good enough. Samwise Gamgee wins it for you. So, after the third question, it is 2-1 to Anne and Jane. Richard. Uh, yeah, very, very well done. Let's take a look at uh, all nine members of the Fellowship of the Ring. Uh, Maria Doc Brandybuck, or Mary, was right at the bottom, would have got you 10 points. Uh, Boromir, Gimli, Aragorn, uh, Legolas is up there, would have got you 15 points. If we take a look at the top four. Uh, Peregrine Took, or Pippin, has 15 there. Samwise Gamgee, uh, then Gandalf, and Frodo Baggins was the, uh, the most popular answer of all with 34. Well done if you got all of those. Thanks very much, Richard. OK, so after that question, it is 2-1 to Anne and Jane. If you win this next one, you are straight through to our final and you'll have a crack at that jackpot of £6,000. So, Heather and Julie, you're going to have to win this one if you want to stay in the game. OK, here's your fourth question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many countries that border Germany as they could. <laughs> Heather, not thrilled with that. Richard, countries that border Germany. Yeah, we're looking for any European country that shares a natural land border with Germany. As always, by a country, it's a sovereign state that's a member of the UN. There are nine countries that share a land border with Germany. OK. Anne and Jane to answer first. Um, <laughs> we'll go for Austria. OK, Austria. <laughs> Anna and Jane say. Heather and Julie. We'll go with Belgium. You're going to go with Belgium. OK, we have Austria and we have Belgium. Anne and Jane said Austria. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Austria. Well, it's correct. 60. <laughs> Heather and Julie have gone with Belgium. Let's see how many people said Belgium. <laughs> OK, that wins it for Heather and Julie. So, after our fourth question, it is two all. Very exciting. Richard? Yeah, very good. Those are actually the, the second and third most popular answers. There are lots of answers that could have won that. Let's take a look at all nine countries, see how many you got. Czech Republic, down the bottom with 14. Denmark has got a land border, of course, that's 26. Then Luxembourg, Switzerland and the Netherlands. Poland, 50. Belgium, 52. Austria with 60. And uh, France, top of all, with 70 points. OK, thank you very much, Richard. Well, this is very exciting. This is our fifth and final question, the decider. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many BBC TV channels as they could. Yeah, we're looking for any of the BBC's eight national TV channels that you can uh, receive on terrestrial freeview or subscription services, not BBC Scotland, BBC Alba, the, the regional ones. We're just looking for the eight... BBC TV channels that you can get on your terrestrial, your uh, free view and uh, subscription telly. BBC HD doesn't count as its own channel either. OK, Heather and Julie, your turn to go first. We are going to go for BBC Three. BBC Three. Anne and Jane. 
one, two, three, four. CBBs, which is yeah, toddlers. Yeah. CBBC, which is our yeah, children's age. You've gone. CBBC. CBBC, say Anne yeah. and Jane. OK, so Heather and Julie, you said BBC Three. Let's see how many of our 100 people said BBC Three. Wow, didn't even have time to build up a, build up a pace there. <laughs> 91. OK, CBBC, say Anne and Jane. Let's see how many said that. Yep, that's it, that's the final. Good answer. Wow, that's So, after our fifth and final question, Anne and Jane are through to the final 3-2. Richard? Yes, CBBC, very well done. So the second best answer you could have given, there's one better answer. Let's take a look at all eight. Uh, the best answer you could have got, so well done if you got this at home as BBC Parliament. And then CBBC, CBBS, which is the, the, the preschool channel, BBC News, BBC News 24 would have got you 38. And the top four line up very nicely. Fourth, BBC Four. Third, BBC Three. Then BBC Two. BBC Two is a good channel, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it though? Isn't it though? Especially daytime, I find. Oh, daytime BBC Two. Now, now you're talking. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head. -head, I'm afraid it's Heather and Julie. Heather and Julie, bad luck. Do you think you've both played pretty well, or do you feel one of you's slightly let the side down? It's me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hold my hand up here. Yeah. Geography is not a strong point. Not it's a strong point. Either either <laughs> anything's a strong point. It's either either of us. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. You've been fantastic contestants. Lovely to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but for Anne and Jane, it's time for our pointless final and the chance to win £6,000. Congratulations, Anne and Jane. You've elbowed aside the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. That's what you came here for. Now you've got a chance to win our pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at an unbelievable £6,000. <laughs> OK, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that no one else could think of. Now, we've had three pointless answers on the show today. You just have to find one now. Simple. First, though, you've got to choose a category from these three options. And you can go for pop music, Oscar winners, London. Oscar winners is just, I think it's going to be too big a category. You'd okay. have to get really obscure answers. Go Let's pop go music. pop music. Not Cliff Richard comes up. You're going to go pop music yes. and yeah, hope Cliff for Richard. Cliff Richard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost inevitable. <laughs> OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many... East 17 <laughs> top 40 singles as they could. East 17 top 40 singles. OK, Richard. Yeah, the Cliff Richards of the 90s, East 17. We're looking for any East 17 single that reached the UK top 40, including collaborations. They had 16 top 40 hits. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £6,000 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. How many do you know? Stay. <laughs> Not that, that's it. Um, um, I can't let's say stay, know. come back and... Um, babe. Did <laughs> no, not babe. Something like I could have done someone called a home. Stay, come back and home. home. Yeah. Um, just who, did, 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 who else have been somewhere? Oh. They have been with somebody else, can't remember who it was, though. No. Stay, come back and home. Yeah, Leave it all. Yeah. We can I mean, we know Stay's going to score points, but... Yeah, I think that's... Yeah, score yeah. those three. First on those three. three. Just as okay. random words. OK, yes. you've come that's up with three involved. answers. <laughs> so what are you going to say? I'm going to say, stay. Stay. Come back. Come back. <laughs> Hang on, this is and, like dog tracks. Um, <laughs> and sit. Home. What? <laughs> home. And... Home. home. <laughs> Stay, come back, home. home yeah. Okay, which of those do you think is your strongest answer? Your best chance of winning a pointless? Come Stay. <laughs> stay. Stay. We know that is a top, uh, an E17 single. Stay. Um, okay, so we'll put stay at, uh, as our third answer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And which the is other two were just complete Random guesses. Words, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll go with, <laughs> we'll start with come back, but then we'll have home. <laughs> and then we'll have stay, yeah. OK? Come back, home and stay. 
You only need to find one pointless answer to win that £6,000. Let's see if Come Back <laughs> is an East 17 single. If it's correct, let's see how many people said Come Back. <laughs> this is your first of three shots at the jackpot. One of them has to be pointless. Oh, surprise. surprise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yep, unfortunately, that is an incorrect answer. Come Back is not an East 17 <laughs> single, so that is not a pointless answer. You only have two more chances to win today's <laughs> jackpot. OK, well, we knew that was, we knew that was a punt. We knew, that, we knew yeah. that was a punt. No chance. Your next answer, Home. That'd be a lovely, lovely title for a single, that. It's your second of three shots at the jackpot. We're looking for East 17 top 40 singles. Let's hope nobody said your next answer. Home. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. We're good at this, aren't yeah. we? <laughs> it's all riding on this last answer. This is, a, this is an answer. You know it's a song they sang. We are looking for East 17 top 40 singles. You said this was the answer you were most confident in. This has to be pointless. We've really got to hope nobody said stay for the jackpot of £6,000 to be yours. Let's see if it's a correct answer, and if it is, how many people said it? Stay. Oh, oh no! I bet it's stay now. <laughs> oh, bad luck. Unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, so you don't win today's jackpot of £6,000, which rolls over to the next show. But you have to be fantastic contestants, and you do get to take home our pointless trophy. What would you have loved to have come up there? Obviously, Oscar winners. Cliff Richard. <laughs> Oscar. I went to his concert. I sort of had half Does he do any 17 covers? No. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He should. He should. He should. <laughs> Richard, put us out of our misery. Name us some E17 songs. Oh, I remember I remember E17 very well. Stay was actually called Stay Another Day. That was their, their Christmas number one. Paul Young did a song called Come Back and Stay, which is two of your answers. <laughs> and Home has, has been hit for all sorts of people. Michael Bublé recently, Westlife, uh, Simply Red did, did a song called Home as well. There were five pointless answers here. A couple of big hits. Uh, their cover version of the Pet Shop Boys, West End Girls, that was a pointless answer, would have won the money. Hold My Body Tight, uh, Around the World, that was a number three hit. Hey Child, that was also number three. And Someone to Love, they were the, the pointless answers there that would have won the money. Well done if you've got any of those at home. Well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to Anne and Jane. You've been great contestants. Thank you both for playing. Thanks so much. So nobody's won our jackpot today, so it rolls over again, which means on the next show we will be playing for £7,000. <laughs> Join us next time, see if someone can win it on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye.